Hello and welcome to a brand new developer tutorial series. In this series we will be covering Java RESTful services. This is a quick video to give you an introduction to this series. In this video we will be going over what is a RESTful service, the software that we're going to be using to cover this tutorial series, and why you would want to learn about it. Just like my other tutorials, I will not be getting overly technical about this subject. This is an introduction to the framework and I will be giving you the basics to understand the framework and also possible benefits to the framework. For the purposes of this tutorial series, a service is defined as an application that is hosted on the back end ready to serve data to whatever client requests it. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. I will be giving you some details on what this means right after the last bullet point. The concept of RESTful services was first introduced in the year 2000 by Roy Fielding at the University of California. So as you can see, this concept has been around for quite a few years. It's only really blown in popularity in the last few years though. So what are the basic guidelines to making RESTful services work? Notice that I said guidelines and not rules. I will discuss more on this after we go over the basics. There are four main guidelines to developing a RESTful service. The first, and in my opinion the most important, is using HTTP as your communication medium. By this I mean you using HTTP to communicate with your service. So a client will be requesting data through HTTP. This of course is the basics of how the internet currently works. The second point is that the URI, or more commonly known as the URL, represents the directory structure of your service. This is a fancy way of saying that you should organize your service through readable URLs. This will be much easier to understand once we start coding in part 2 of this tutorial series. The third point is to transfer all data in XML or JSON format or both. XML is popular when developing in Java or .NET applications. JSON is popular when developing web applications. The last point is that a service should be stateless meaning that all requests should be standalone requests, no transactional series in which a communication is based off of the previous request. So once a request is complete, all knowledge of that request is either erased or forgotten. Now I mentioned at the very beginning that these are guidelines and not rules. There are many developers out there that will disagree with me on this. I personally think this is a ivory tower mentality. This is the reason why there are so many languages, frameworks, and databases because by creating these as strict rules you cause a lot of inflexibility and this causes people to go and develop something of their own and if it's good enough it'll become popular and it'll become its own new standard. I personally am very flexible on number points 3 and 4. Moving on to the next slide, this is the software we're going to be using to develop our Java RESTful service. We will be using WebLogic with Eclipse and really we don't need WebLogic, we just need a Java EE container. I just chose WebLogic because once you have it installed and configured, it's very easy to use and it has a very nice GUI. For data storage, I will be using Oracle Database. And again, you can use any type of database you want. It's just that I chose this one arbitrarily. We will be using the Chrome browser to demo our API or our RESTful web service. And lastly, all of our code is going to be hosted on GitHub. Please click on the links currently being shown if you want to know more about each subject. So why is this particular framework important to learn? Well there are plenty of reasons, but I'm going to only be focusing on one, which is mobility. Within the last five years, we've seen a dramatic change in how people view technology, thanks in large part due to the proliferation of smartphones, tablets, and ultrabooks. Users now consume information on many different OS platforms. And with this, it has become increasingly more complex on how we as developers need to deliver that data to each specific platform. If you rewind to the year 2000s, users at that point only consumed information on expensive computers and laptops, which essentially are the same thing. And for the most part, that meant supporting Windows, Mac OS, and maybe Linux or Unix. Fast forward to present day, we now have Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Chrome OS, RIM, which is Blackberry, and Nokia, which is creating Windows 8 mobile phones. So now we have jumped from supporting two to three OS platforms to supporting probably five or more. 
And I would love to say that we can solve this problem by making web applications to support all OS platforms. But the truth is, the browser is just not there yet. I personally believe that in the future this could be possible, but at present it does feel like make one web app to suck on all platforms. If you want your application to stand out, then you really need to go into native development to be able to get to some of the things like touch, vibration, maybe GPS, things that right now are kind of squishy when it comes to web development. So having said all that, what we want to be able to do is to create a backend application that can communicate with all of our platforms. And the best way to do that is to be able to communicate through HTTP as the protocol or for our communication medium. And the reason for that is because almost all new devices, in fact it's pretty much guaranteed that all new devices will be able to connect to the internet. So your phone, your tablets, your ultrabooks, they're even putting it in cars, you know, refrigerators. This is probably the best bet to future-proof your design. Now simplifying the back end is important to us the developers because we're the ones that have to support and maintain the application. But for the consumers, what they want is flexibility and the way to be able to use that service in any way they see fit. A good example of this would be social media sites. Sites like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Maps, they all have RESTful services to access their data. And the reason for this is that what you're seeing is users want to be able to get access to that data through whatever front end they see most convenient. The old concept of if you want access to my data, you need to go through my front end is starting to get challenged. This can also be a benefit to our application as well because many times we can access other people's information and if we combine it with ours, we give the user more meaningful data. These are some simple examples that I put together. I'm sure there are better examples out there if you do a search yourself. Also, are RESTful services the only way to do this? Of course not. I'm sure there are plenty of alternatives. But I like this solution because it's built on proven web technologies. That is it for part one. Stay tuned for part two in which we actually get into the code. As always, thank you for your time and to my subscribers, thank you for your support.